Hello again, everyone, and welcome back to Reddit Aliens. I'm your host, John, and we've got a one-hour video coming up today. So let's get to it. Hikers of Reddit, what's the scariest or creepiest thing you've found on a hike? Please remember to like, share, and subscribe. Enjoy. On a backpacking trip in the Sierra Mountains in California, my buddy forgot to put his toothpaste in the bear bag, which is a bag you put all the food and aromatic items to hang from a tree branch at night so the bears won't eat it. At about 2 a.m., we hear him yelling and get up to find a huge black bear on top of him in his tent trying to get at the toothpaste. The rest of us had to bang pans and throw rocks to get the bear to leave him alone. Hiking in Vermont I saw a bright red shirt hanging in a tree off the trail, so I went to check it out. I saw a couple of freshly dug graves and a few really old headstones, reported it. Turned out it was someone stealing headstones from a local graveyard and relocating them. Don't know if they were stealing the bodies too. This is neither scary nor weird, just sad. I found a sheep that had managed to tangle itself in some loose barbed wire. It was during the summer, pretty warm out, and I had no idea how long it had been there but it was still alive. The leg that was tangled, hind, was nothing but bone all the way to its hip. The meat had been eaten by the maggots that were all over it. I have no idea how it managed to survive so long, but I put it down. This happened in the mid 70s and it still bothers me to this day. Me, my old roommate and friend went hiking in the woods in Tennessee. We were going along minding our own business, then we came up upon a stream. On the other side of the stream, getting ready to cross, was a group of about five or six dudes only wearing socks and shoes. Naked bros hiking in the woods. I'm all about being in your birthday suit or whatever, but it was weird seeing it for the first time and apparently it's a thing. I've seen mountain lions, I've seen bears. The scariest thing I've seen was an elaborate grow operation in Northern California. I crested a hill and walked 20 yards into this valley when I realized there was irrigated pot plants for as far as the eye could see. Reservoirs, hoses, camouflaged netting. My friend and I noped out of there as fast as we could, both expecting to be shot on our way back to our car. I stumbled on a poaching dump when I was 14. I used to hike trails near our home way out in the woods. I'd explore and then have to find my way back without a compass. I went really far one day, probably two or three miles through these old logging trails. I started smelling something terrible. There was a rocky outcrop right before a steep cliff. At the bottom of the cliff, there was a massive pile of dead deer. Most were decapitated. Some were fawns. Had to have been 20 or 30 of them at varying states of decay. The stench was mind-alteringly bad. When I thought I had seen enough, I heard four-wheelers and decided to hide. Two poachers in camo rolled up and tossed two more deer carcasses on the pile. They smoked, talked, and then left after about 10 minutes. I was probably 15 feet from them the entire time, hiding under a hemlock tree. I did not recognize either of them, and I knew absolutely everyone on the entire side of town. It was only 15 or 20 houses in a 5 mile stretch. I ran home and told my parents. They didn't believe me. Plus, they didn't know I was running off to those trails, so I got in huge trouble for that. I mentioned it to our neighbor, who was big into hunting. He seemed very concerned and brought it up to the game warden. They investigated it, found the dump site, but never caught anybody. I'm 100% certain it was not my neighbor. Well, I'm simultaneously sorry and happy that you found that spot. Hopefully that ceased that terrible behavior that those poachers were doing. Hiking early morning in Hawaii and my stomach notifies me that it's time to go number two. I found a porta potty near the trailhead and jumped in to do my business. Once complete, I flipped my headlamp on to find the toilet paper, but instead find a huge 5 inch in diameter banana spider hanging out in the corner of the porta potty. Trying not to spook it, I slowly reached for the one ply. As I do, my headlamp shines on this monster and it proceeds to freak the F out. It runs in circles for a bit, both of us losing our minds at this point, and ends up between my legs inside of my underwear. I'm at complete loss for what to do, but eventually begin wiggling back and forth in an attempt to get the spider to remove itself. That didn't work at all. Instead of exiting the premises, this MFR runs up my leg. This is the point where I give up and storm out of the porta potty yelling and screaming pants around my ankles. No clue what happened to that spider, but it disappeared in a flash. 
just like my dignity. I could vaguely hear some kind of instrument being played. The closer I got, I could make out it was a saxophone. This dude was walking the trail through the woods while playing an effing sax. I passed him and he said, beautiful day for music. I thought I wandered into a Twin Peaks episode. Back in 2015, I was on a hiking trail in Arizona. I've hiked a lot in worse terrain in Europe, so I wasn't too worried about doing it alone. It was almost getting dark, and I was in an eerily deserted stretch for what felt like hours now. Suddenly, I heard a kind of music. As I kept going, I realized it was someone whistling. It gave me the creeps, but the idea of company relieved me a bit too. Soon enough, I saw a man in front of me walking the same direction. He was wearing a t-shirt and pants, which were surprisingly inadequate, especially for the impending night. I passed him by. He was the one whistling indeed turned to say the customary greetings. He looked up, deadpan, and without a word turned back down towards the ground and kept whistling. He was walking slowly in an attempt almost trance-like manner. I quickly averted my gaze forward, then almost abruptly the whistling stopped. I turned back to see what happened, and there was absolutely no one on the trail. Zilch. It didn't even feel like anyone had been there. Needless to say, I freaked the F out. I made it back without any further issues, but I still think about what I saw or heard that night. Hiking in Alaska. I once found myself 50 yards from a grizzly bear and her cub, but weirdly, I wasn't worried as we were at a creek side that was having a heavy salmon run and she was way more interested in the fish than me. I just took some pictures and then backed away slowly. What actually did scare the shit out of me was the time I was hiking near Homer, Alaska on what felt like an almost suburban bike path. A moose and her calf walked out of the woods in front of me. Moose are so huge. They're not like deer at all. I was inside of my car, but she was between me and it. I was hoping she would continue walking, but she decided to stop and eat some of the tall shrubbery along the edge of the path, all the while staring at me. It felt like hours that I stood there frozen until she eventually moved on, but in reality, it was probably only a few minutes. Sleeping in a shelter on the Appalachian Trail in Tennessee. It's a multi-level shelter that is pretty full. We're all sleeping when suddenly an incredibly loud bang wakes everyone up. It was followed by complete silence. Everyone was awake, but I began to question if it actually happened. That was effing weird, but I was so tired I just wanted to sleep. In the morning, I looked outside the shelter, and a tree had fallen on it in the middle of the night. Thankfully, it wasn't a huge tree, and the shelter didn't collapse. All right, so... Things go bump in the night, that's okay. Things go bang in the night, everybody's awake and nobody sleeps. Glad nobody was hurt. Late 90s, I was in my junior year of high school and hiking up Usury Mountain in East Mesa, Arizona with my best bud and two girls we liked. We reached the wind cave at the top but wanted to keep going, so we scrambled up to the summit to take in the view. My friend was sitting on a rock and noticed an old rusty Altoids tin box and picked it up. Inside were two folded up pieces of white paper, which he spread out on the rock. The first page was a crude sketch of the view from the exact spot drawn in pencil, with the caption, The Last View from Blank's Eyes. With the date, I believe it was only some months or a year past. The second page was an apology letter, listing people in the person's life and things they were sorry to have said or did to them. We surmised that it was a suicide note and started searching the backside of usury for anything, something, remains, clothes, more clues, nothing. This was the late 90s, and internet search was not really a thing yet, so we went to the Central Mesa Library to sort through the microfiche files, skimming through newspapers a little after the date on the drawing for any lost person notices or any news related and again nothing. But it was fun feeling like I was Encyclopedia Brown for an afternoon. Some years later, my friend moved to another part of the US and hasn't really kept in touch, but I often wonder if he still has the tin and if he ever found the person's identity using modern research methods. Unsatisfying and to the story I know, but it was definitely a little creepy and a little sad. Plus, I got to use the word microfish. East Mesa has a surprising amount of culty aspects that I experienced growing up. I should probably write them all down. In the 1970s, my then best friend and I went to the same summer day camp. Once a week, they'd drive us to a state park for the day. They'd arrange games, baseball, soccer, etc. for us to play to keep us kids occupied. 
My friend and I hated sports and preferred not to play. We'd rather take solitary hikes in the woods and explore. We weren't allowed to go off alone without counselors, so we never asked permission. One time, we came across a milk crate filled with cartons of milk right in the middle of the woods, far from any place that would need it. They weren't even expired, old, or spoiled. It was good fresh milk. Why would anyone deposit a single crate filled with cartons of fresh milk out in the middle of nowhere? I was hiking in northern Ontario through an old mining road. Years of neglect had fallen tons of trees. My partner and I had a 27 pound pack on, so ducking over fallen trees was time consuming and tiring. We got to the point of the trail where we needed to go south to the lake. There was a beach there we spotted on Google Earth. Thinking nothing of it, we head straight through the forest, no path. For those that have been through boreal forests, you know what I'm talking about. I'm up front for the first part. I step near a conifer truck. I'm two feet away from the trunk, but my foot disappears into a hole. I didn't lose my balance and quickly recover, but use the nearby stick to poke around the area. It's just a fake top with broken branches and brown pine needles. Don't know how far it went down. Came to the realization there are a lot of holes in this forest. We kept our distance from any conifer trunk and made it safely to our destination. It was worth the hike, and we made it safely home. If something bad had happened, we were many miles away from the main road and tough hauling back through old mining roads. Great memories, but... I have been hiking and backpacking for 25 years and have seen bears, mountain lion prints, etc. But honestly, the scariest thing has always been other people. Not people I think are going to attack me, people I think are going to die. <laughs> The number of people I see miles from the trailhead with just a t-shirt and shorts and nothing else, nothing in their hands, no bag, no water, no food, no hat, no extra layers, compass, rain gear, etc. The worst was when I was six miles into a backpacking trip. It was nearly dark. I'd been hiking for a couple of hours in darkness before I made camp, and this guy with nothing but shorts and a t-shirt passed me headed in the other direction. He was going to be in pitch black soon, with no headlamp or jacket or food. He looked really stressed out. Not really a hiking story, but more woods related. A family was camping and their golden retriever brought a human femur with an artificial hip joint attached to it out of the woods. I was a rural cop who handled the case. We ran the serial number on the hip and it came back to a woman who had been reported missing in the area about 15 years prior. Multiple theories had been put forward, but her body and vehicle had never been recovered. We organized a search party to recover remains and were able to locate both her remains, the vehicle, and solve the case. There was a section of highway about two miles north of the campsite where the dog had found the femur. It made a sharp turn and had about a 50-foot drop into a heavily forested basin. Her vehicle left the road and crashed at the bottom of the cliffs, killing her. Scavenger animals then spread the remains over a wide area in the basin. It is a remote area and nobody would have witnessed the crash and the car was not visible from the top of the cliffs. So she and her car had been missing 15 years and was only sitting 50 feet off the road the entire time. Years ago, I was taking a short hike around a lake where I lived, something I must have done a hundred times before. Nice day, but during the middle of the week so no one else was around. About 10 minutes into it, I got the sense of someone behind me and turned around. When I did, I saw a man about 30 feet behind me walking very quickly in my direction with his eyes right on me. Strange thing was that as soon as I turned to look at him, he immediately turned around and walked back the way he had come. I got the creepiest sensation that I had been in the immediate danger from the guy and that the man turned back the other way because he had lost the element of surprise. I waited about 20 or so minutes and then got the hell out of there. Still wonder what would have happened if I hadn't turned around. Absolutely nothing at all, twice, in two different parts of the country. Of course, the answer is more complicated than that. I'm a very seasoned hiker, two long trails under my belt, a few thousand trail miles, and hundreds of nights spent in the woods, many of them solo. I've had black bears around my tent numerous times, even been booped in the hammock by one. TLDR, not much bothers me while camping. I'll just tell one. The experiences were similar enough that the second is just redundant. I was passed out in my hammock one night around 2am in a familiar area 
I've hiked and camped for years, and suddenly I'm wide awake and almost buzzing like someone with way too much caffeine in their system. Think stacking a monster with a pre-workout. Dropped out of my hammock, then took a look around fully enclosed hammock with rain fly up. I don't see anything odd, I don't hear anything at all, which is weird because the woods are never quiet. Everything feels heavy AF, very oppressive feeling. My brain goes into get the F out mode, tearing down, stuffing everywhere in my pack. I also did something I've never done while hiking, grab my holster and pistol and clip it to my pack. I always conceal, but not that night. Around then I notice a barely audible, very high pitched whine, but I can't figure out a direction on it. It's just there. I haul ass about half a mile down trail back towards the trailhead and the car, and it just stopped. Felt fine. Panic went down. I was hearing normal things in the woods, and the whole feeling of oppression stopped. I don't know what happened. Was it a sleep disturbance leading to an anxiety attack both times? I've read exposure to ELF magnetic fields cause such a reaction. Something supernatural? I've absolutely no clue. Some searches led me to learn it's a phenomena. There is a Reddit thread on one of the paranormal subs about it. I also found this link that describes it pretty well. I was hiking alone with my dog. It was at the beginning of the hike, so I was still very close to a town. I met a family walking together, a man, a woman, and a kid. The man says hi to me, and it's obvious he wants to talk, so I stop, assuming he wants to ask about my dog's breed or something. My dog smells him, and he says to my dog, Ah, you know what the master is here. What the F? Then he asks me, Are you not afraid to walk alone? I tell him, No, I'm not. Then he asks me, Are you sure? You're a young woman alone. Are you not afraid of being attacked? Well, now I am, thanks. I tell him that I'm close to the town, so no. He then told me how I shouldn't be without a man and keeps asking, Are you not scared of being assaulted or killed by someone? At this point, I wanted to ask him if by someone he meant him. I pointed out that I had a big dog with me and told him how my dog was protective and wouldn't hesitate to defend me if anything goes wrong, which is true, but I mostly said it to scare him in any case he had bad intentions. I made eye contact with the woman and kid at some point and it was obvious they were embarrassed. Eventually I left and I never saw them again. This all took place in a rural area in France, not a place that's especially dangerous for women. Another scary thing I saw was an effing massive boar. It took me a minute to understand what that creature was, but that's not as scary as a creepy dude. Well, if I had a nickel for every time a Frenchman said something inappropriate towards an American woman, I could probably buy a gallon of gas. I spent half of 2021 working and living out of a hotel on the New Hampshire-Vermont border, did a lot of mountain biking in the Askunuti area was on a trail right off Route 44A and immediately was hit with the smell of death. Of course, I had to investigate, kept walking, smell got stronger and stronger, couldn't see anything. Then I noticed the ground I was standing on felt strange, like I was standing on a waterbed. I jumped up and down a few times and juices started squirting out of the sandy substray. I grabbed a stick and dug and in no time, a large hulking mass of rotting flesh or meat revealed itself, maggots everywhere. I did call the police and pointed him toward the sand pit. He seemed kind of uneasy, and as I started walking with him, he turned around and shot me a look of distrust and told me I was free to leave. I left. Never heard what it was. Roadkill that the town decided to bury out in a really old spot? A person? I kept googling for weeks and weeks after, but never heard a word of it. Technically didn't see, but weird creepy story. I was hiking Cerro Chiripo in Costa Rica last May, 42 kilometer trail that I started at midnight and finished at 5.30 p.m. There's a lodge at the base of the trail. Once I finished and got back, there were cops with a family there. I ate dinner and went to bed, not knowing what was going on. The next day I found out that a woman who was hiking with two family members had disappeared on the hike. She had apparently been hiking ahead of the other two for a short period, when they heard her scream. When they caught up to where she had been, she wasn't there or anywhere to be found. They searched and called out as long as possible until they had to head down the trail to seek help. They found her body four days later. She had fallen off a large cliff. Turns out I passed her dead or dying body unknowingly at some point on the hike. 
A buddy of mine and I were hiking Mount Washington in October. We're seasoned and prepared hikers. It was a windy, cold day, but we had a great time. Managed to also bag Monroe between sets of clouds, just obscuring everything. We knew that we'd be hiking in the dark and planned according. We're hiking down the jewel trail with the headlamps on and out of the darkness we hear, Hello? My buddy and I both basically shit ourselves. Standing there is a young woman and her boyfriend in sneakers and light jackets freezing. No backpacks, no water, no nothing. We start to ask questions, and they only speak French. My buddy thankfully is a native speaker, and we get the whole story. They started hiking up Jewel at 3 p.m. From there, they managed to fumble around, and then they lost the light. This was 2008, so smartphones weren't terrible, but it didn't take long for them to blow the batteries, trying to use them as flashlights. Too afraid to go downhill in the dark, they did the sensible thing and just stopped. We gave them water and food and our spare layers and started back down the trail. We got them back to their car and they thanked us profusely. I always wondered how people could die in the whites. This was the first time seeing how unprepared people will gleefully go down the trail without a care. We had hiked in about 10 miles to go trout fishing, finished for the day, had supper, and they, four of us, were in a tent for the night. About 3 a.m., one of the guys woke us up. There was a snuffing, sniffling, something moving around the camp. They would finally started sniffing and snuffling and pushing against the tent door. I mean, really trying to get in. Nose outline pushed into the fabric. They all thought it was a bear. I was tasked with pointing my pistol at the door while one of the other guys unzipped it a little bit and rolled away so we could see what this creature was. It's poked its nose through the tent door. Everyone screams, shoot it, shoot it. I was safety off, trigger halfway pulled, when I realized it was a coon dog nose poking through the door. It was just a lost and spent the rest of the night in the tent with us and was our best dog buddy for the next several days. Was walking through a not so popular or known trail. It wasn't marked very well and we got turned around a few times and there really wasn't a lot of signs that people were on the trail often. Most paths were tough to see if they were even trails or we were just wandering. Then, we saw what looked like a dense area of trees, and what looked like a path. So, we head towards it, and it was a well-traveled path, just in this little area. We take a turn and see some strange, shiny, reflective objects in the tree. Cautiously round the turn, and then as far as we could see about 30 yards on, only straight path was Christmas ornaments. I mean, there had to be hundreds of them, really creepy ones, and some standard. Some looked personal, but it wasn't the oddity of some of them, it was the sheer amount of them on an unmarked trail in the middle of the woods after we got turned around a bit. That shit was probably the weirdest shit I've ever witnessed. Looked it up on the trails, and we made it out, and there were no comments on that trail about Christmas ornaments. Was hiking alone one of the outlier Appalachian trails? I was alone. I always hike with a pistol. I followed a game trail for a spell to climb high in a ridge in hopes to get some picks from a vantage point when I heard a low guttural growl from a thicket. I am familiar with most animal sounds from this area. I don't know what it was and have not heard since. I stopped and peered into the thicket but couldn't see anything obvious. I drew my weapon and backed out of the trail for about a hundred yards and walked the rest of the trail back to the main hiking trail. I continued on until I came across a man and a woman hiking with a dog. The dog was fairly aggressive and evidently gave them fits, holding him so we didn't chat. I moved on another hundred yards and stopped for lunch. I wish I had time to inform them I heard something but figured that they wouldn't travel the game trail. As I was eating my lunch, I heard the dog go ballistic in the distance. I quickly grabbed my things and walked back toward the game trail I followed earlier. I never saw those people again. I checked the papers and researched, but no one ever was reported missing from that area. To this day, I never found out what was growling in the thicket. In Florida Panhandle back in 2000, I was hiking with a girlfriend along the Escambia Trail when we heard a woman grunting and moaning. Knowing how the trail at that point runs along a large drop and Thinking someone may have fallen and gotten hurt, we rushed to the sound ahead of us by the rock pools, only to find a nude hippie woman in the throes of giving birth. We were shocked. She was angry we interrupted her spiritual openness moment, and as she was in no shape to run off, 
We did with her begging us not to tell anyone what she was as it was illegal, we assumed. All I know was by the time we hiked back to my truck, found a phone and called 911, five hours had passed and all they found was some blood mess on the rocks. Never found out what happened or where she went, but definitely my top five weird lifetime moments. Florida. Things that you should be surprised at if discovering something odd in Florida. Nothing. Nothing should be surprising. You're in Florida. Even if it is the Panhandle. I'm not sure if I can call this a hiking story, but I hope this will make sense. While I was still living in the US with my dad, we would often visit my grandma. She lived in the middle of the woods, but there was still some land to walk freely without going into the woods. My dad and I were driving to her house to repair something because she was gone for a few days and couldn't call anyone. My dad needed something, so he wanted to go ask her neighbors to see if they had what he needed. I was doing my own thing, till I turned around seeing my uncle, grandma's son, looking straight at me from the corner of the house. I shouted out to my dad, Hey dad, uncle's name is over there. He didn't see him, so I told him to follow me, and that's where my uncle just walked away. Every time we turned the corner, I would see him walking off. My dad eventually asked where he was, then I would tell him that he keeps turning the corner over and over. He went around the house one more time and didn't find my uncle anywhere. That's where I got scared and told him I don't feel so well and if we can go back home. Since my dad couldn't do anything cause he didn't have the thing that he needed, we just went home. While we were driving away, I looked in the side view mirror and saw my so-called uncle standing by the house. I'm now 18 and still wondering what I saw. Two weird encounters on separate occasions on the same trail. In the mountains of North Georgia, the state, I, male, was hiking with a friend, female, visiting from out of state. We were on mile four-ish of a seven mile loop. Walking in the opposite direction of us was a big man who was only wearing overalls and very clearly pitching a tent. He had the longest toenails. I had a huge knife strapped to his waist. He smiled at us and said, hello. We returned the greeting and kept walking. And then he said that my friend was beautiful. The second we passed him, my friend and I gave each other the look and booked it. I stayed behind her the rest of the time, hiking, and kept glancing over my shoulder until we got to the car. The second time I was hiking alone with my dog, and maybe mile six of the seven mile loop, I run into a group of men. One was wearing a monk's robe and had no hair at all on his head, and the other two were wearing all white and were kneeling in front of Baldy humming. The bald guy and I make eye contact and he tells me life is a gift and when he finished that sentence both of the kneeling men stopped humming and snapped their heads to look at me. I panic and just say heck yeah it is and keep walking. The two guys started humming again but I could feel Baldi's eyes burning a hole in the back of my head as I hiked up the switch back to the car. Needless to say those experiences I have not gone back to that trail. Not a hiker, but I trail rode horses for 15 years growing up. I'll keep this relatively short and succinct, but I'd rather not relive the whole thing. Was in the Rockies with my dad one summer vacation when I was 14 and a family of four was hiking ahead of us on the trail. They had a good head start. Kids petted our horses before they left the trailhead as we saddled up. Came up on three of them just before a bend. Stopped and chatted, asked where a 10 year old boy was. They said he was around the bend checking something out. Rode ahead a bit around the bend and found a mountain lion in the trail. It was standing above the boy, blood everywhere. My dad charged his horse at the mountain lion, pulled a revolver he always carried while we were on the trail and shot in the air. Gutsiest shit I've ever seen. Lion ran pretty fast into the woods. Dad fired two after it and he passed the boy. Then turned around and jumped off to see the kid. I came up since my saddlebags had the first and kit that we carried. Kid was still alive, but my dad had his hand over the kid's throat, blood everywhere. Father of the family came around the corner to see what the gunshots were about and saw the boy. There was a lot of yelling, but I don't really remember what was said. I was locked up on my horse. I was a boy scout and had first aid training, but I was just frozen there. I don't remember thinking much of anything, just in shock. I don't really want to type out the rest, but younger boy didn't make it. Mountain Lion was hunted down by park rangers days later. 
found out it was pregnant and starving, which is why it likely was inclined to target a human. I tell this story here as a warning to any hikers, bikers, or whoever goes out in the woods, especially in places with a higher population of predatory animals like the Rockies. Stay together. Stay armed. Gun, mace, bolt, whatever. Stay informed of the dangers. Listen to the rangers and their warnings. Prepare. Take precautions. And, for goddamn sake, don't go by yourself. Back in the early 2000s, before weed was legal, I was hiking deep in the redwood forest of Humboldt with my dog and four pit bulls popped out of the forest and jumped us. My dog slipped his collar and took off in the opposite direction. Luckily, I have a lot of dog experience because I worked at a dog daycare and grabbed the biggest one by the scruff of the neck and Caesar maligned him on the ground until he stopped squirming. And fortunately, the others didn't bite, just barked. Let him go and they ran back into the forest whistled for my dog and he came running, and got the F out of there before the likely illegal pot farm owners found me. Brave of you to handle that situation. Did a great job. Your dog, on the other hand, maybe have a nice talk when you get back. Still man's best friend, but, you know. In northeastern Maryland, being from Baltimore, I'm not really that great at being in the woods, but I have an amazing sense of direction. I was walking with a friend who was staying in Westminster at the time, and there's fairly little up there. We suddenly noticed that everything had fallen silent, and that the ringing of said silence let us hear the slightest crunching to our left. My friend, who was smoking a blunt, proceeded to shine his flashlight on his phone to the left, and we saw an empty field, nothing out of place. Then he turned slightly, and the phone's light caught a glassy-eyed crackhead, gimping his way toward with a tank top and Tim's on and a buck knife in his hand. My friend is relatively short and not very muscular, and at the time, I was 6'1 and carrying a book bag with a GameCube in it. I closed the gap and stood in between my bro and what I'm not going to lie, I thought was an effing zombie because of how scared shitless I was. Then he started bolting towards us and I swung my hippie satchel into his temple and proceeded to follow the frantic shaking light of my friend sprinting for his effing life down the road. I got to his place like five minutes after him and convinced him to let me in after about eight. It was super nice to be able to stress eat an entire bag of combos. On top of that, GameCube is fine. Was bushracking in the Oregon coast range while fishing a creek. The bushes were super thick and I was just about to push some out of the way but it moved by itself and two black bears were staring at me in the face close enough if I leaned over. I could have touched them. They looked right at me, but it was like I wasn't there. More like through me. They started to move towards me, some subtle grunting noises to each other. Two more steps and they would have run into me. I fell backwards and yelled, ah, get away bear. They stopped right at my feet, like almost touching me and proceeded to get the most terrified look on their face, stood up and spun around and took off up a steep hill faster than I can run on flat ground, literally screaming and squealing the whole way. I thought I was scared, but they were effing terrified. I still don't understand how they didn't hear me or smell me or even see me when they were like four feet away. It all happened so fast. I didn't have time to think, maybe three or four seconds from the brush parting to them running and me on the ground. Nothing weird or anything, but I thought I would share this anyway. There was this one time that my husband and I decided to hike up a small mountain in Brazil. We had to pack our car at the beginning of the trail and apparently parking was 20 bucks, but there was no one around to collect the fee. I only had a 20 reis bill with me, Brazilian currency, so I put it in my pocket and we decided to do the hike and pay when we got back. There was no one else on the trail for a while, except for a small snake that scared the crap out of us. After about 40 minutes or so, two guys walk past us heading down. We exchange pleasantries and keep going. We reach the top of the mountain, take some pictures, and decide to head back before it got dark. I then realized that the only $20 bill we had was not in my pocket anymore. I must have dropped it along the way. Maybe when I reached for my phone to take pictures or check for a signal. We spend the whole way back looking at the ground to see if we find the money with no success. We get back to our car ready to start apologizing to whoever was there to collect the parking fee only to notice that there's something on our windshield. There it was, 
the 20 bucks and a note that said, I think you guys dropped this. I hope you enjoyed the view. The two guys that walked past us before must have found it somewhere on the trail and figured it was ours since we were the only other people there. They could have just kept the money, but decided to be nice instead. It's been years, but I still think about that sometimes. <laughs> TL, DR, lost 20 bucks while hiking. Two dudes found the money and left it on my windshield with a nice note. People can be really great sometimes. Hiked a trail with my best friend in San Francisco. Got pretty far out there by the bay, five miles out already. Found an abandoned mattress, no big deal. Walked a little bit more past it and a string of little rodent skeletons intricately hung on it between two trees. Odd, but whatever. Saw a burnt out line of candles underneath, about 10 of them, large ones. Strange, we should go. This looked like weird voodoo at this point, right? Then saw my friend's name painted on a piece of wood in the middle of it by the candles, her full name. This wood was semi-burnt. She has an interesting and uncommon name. I told her, very funny, clever joke, you shithead. She looked at me and was completely freaked. Naturally, she started to panic and became frantic. The look on her face was of sheer horror and terror. Clearly enough proof for me to see that she was not behind it. We ran out. Never, ever, ever hiked that trail again. Never told anyone. I still remember this 25 years later. I still shudder. Never found out who was behind it. Not a hiker, but I quad a lot in the mountains. Weirdly, cows. I drive one way only to find out it's a dead end. So I turn around and all of a sudden there's a large black cow just standing there. It was so sudden that it didn't register at first what it was. I just see a black mass. Scared me to full throttle until I registered it was a cow. Also, cows with calves. I'm riding past them and the calves decide to run beside me and I'm thinking, please don't. I don't want to go faster than necessary if your mom decides to charge. Luckily, most of the cows I encounter seem super chill. And weirdest of all, a farm chicken, deep in the mountain forest. Like it was a healthy looking farm chicken. Surprised it wasn't eaten with how deep in the woods it was. Not much of a hiker, but when I was a teenager, my friends and I would trek out through the woods or on a trail to smoke weed far away from anyone who would care or have time to bust the sport. And one time, we saw a coyote probably 10 meters away from us, and we froze for a second, but they're pretty small, so we just made big arms at it and it ran off. But then, we saw what looked like the same coyote probably 20 minutes later, and were pretty high at this point, so we were just looking at it and talking. Then, one of our friends sitting with his back to us goes, Oh, look at that, pointing the other direction, where there were two more coyotes watching us about the same distance away as the first. It took me longer than I care to admit to pipe up, I think we're surrounded. And without another word, all four or five of us stood up and started sprinting in the same direction. It was like when you're a kid and running around in a dark building and someone convinced you they saw a ghost and everyone runs in panic. We were all giddy by the time we made it back to the trail and felt like it was okay to slow down. Looking back, they probably just thought we had food and were waiting for us to leave, but it was more wild predators than I'm comfortable being around at once. 9 out of 10, scary in the moment, 5 out of 10 in hindsight. As you describe the idea of running in mass uh, to a safe location and almost laughing at the end, it triggered an old memory of me doing the same thing with my friends. Like someone would start running and everybody would run and you'd start laughing at the end. Man, youth was awesome. My ex and I were waiting for a party in college, decided to meander around dirt roads no one really touched. We found a flipped car in the ditch. The driver's arm was sticking outside of the window. We slowly approached it and tried to talk to the person to see if they were still alive. We touched their hand that was sticking out just hoping for a response. We called 911 as soon as we saw it, but it took time for them to arrive. When they did arrive, whoever was in the car was dead. We were passing the time to have a good fun party college night, but stumbled across a dead body. I feel so heartbroken even thinking about it, thinking about how we grabbed his hand and tried to help, but he was already dead. They assumed he was just speeding on a dirt road and flipped because that's how dirt roads are if you don't know how to drive on them. And he had what looked like a sports car, which definitely should not be speeding on dirt roads. 
I always wonder who it was and why that happened. Was he just being goofy and speeding about, or was it intentional? How long did he suffer before he died? No matter what was the cause, at least he isn't suffering anymore, just tragic. If you see a random dead body, it never leaves your head. Back in the early 90s, I did an overnight small chunk of the Appalachian Trail with two work friends. It was rainy, miserable. I had a cheap sleeping bag and an ancient external frame backpack that made me worry about being a lightning rod at that elevation. We got lost on the way out and started bitching at each other and settled into grumpy silence. We hadn't seen anyone the whole time, but then we could hear somebody coughing like a really wet, croupy, hacking cough. Turns out, it was a single adult man and a kid. They were wearing rain gear, but didn't otherwise seem outfitted for even a short jaunt like us, much less a longer hike. The kid looked miserable, just coughing and coughing, and we passed each other in silence. I was basically a kid myself, maybe 19, but the older I have gotten, the more I think about this little five minute snippet of my life. I have kids now. That child had glassy eyes and a flushed face, a sure sign of fever. Its hair was stuck to its face, from the rain. I still remember that sad little resigned look in its eyes as we passed. We were mics and mics from any kind of access point or way station. I never would just keep walking now. The dad, I really hope it was their dad, and I would have a frank conversation. Did they need help? Dry socks? A snack? Was he aware that his kid needed to get off the trail ASAP? Etc. I think about it a lot. My then girlfriend and I went to Glacier National Park with limited preparation. We hiked a trail that was just marked as clear of cougars. We walked out like it was a nice prairie stroll. About 15 minutes into the walk we realized we have not seen anyone. Since the trail had been closed, no one was going in either direction. That made us realize we might bump into a bear. It scares the daylights out of me. The walk back felt like 3 hours. Second story. That same night, we were cooking at our campsite. We just sat down to eat with girlfriends back to the forest. I just happened to look up over her shoulder and I saw a black bear's head camouflage in the trees not 25 feet away. I jumped up saying, no effing way. Girlfriend didn't believe me at first, but she saw it move away. I cannot believe how easily it moved up on us. We slept in the car that night rather than the tent. Last summer, my girlfriend and I, both 22 at the time, were on a road trip from SoCal to Wyoming. Along the way, we were staying at a campground near Mesa Falls in Idaho. The campground was very nice, but looking around, you begin to realize most of the two to 300-ish campsites in the loops had RVs parked. Our site was on the very edge of a cliff. You could hike down to get to a large river and next to a forest. We were site number one, in the very corner of the campground. So I didn't grow up camping, as my girlfriend did, so I got scared easily when camping as is, especially to leave the tent in the middle of the night. I hear these loud animal noises and thunderous charging through the river at about 12.30am. I have to pee, but I'm way too scared to go out and pee. I don't want to wake up my girlfriend, so I literally just lay there awake till 4am having to pee really bad and scared lol. So at about 4, I really have to go and my girlfriend wakes up too, so we both decide to step out and pee. We both just about finish when this super, super loud charging noise comes from the forest to our left and it's sprinting towards us. We freak out and thank god I had my car keys in my pocket, so I locked the door and both leapt into the driver's seat as quickly as we could. We remained in the car till the sun was up and to this day, we still don't know what it was. I've got three crazy experiences. In college, my buddy and I are camping in Mount Washington, lean-tos to have three days of spring skiing at Tuckerman's Ravine. If you don't know the area, there's no lifts. You hike up a very steep and relatively short run. The camping is two to three hours from the parking lot. We wake up to a beautiful morning with not a cloud in the sky. Unfortunately, the Forest Service report says 50 mile per hour winds at the ski area. The mountain has the highest wind speeds recorded on earth. We decided to take a short hike and then hopefully ski in the afternoon. After an hour, we can still see the lean-to. Clouds roll in and it's a complete whiteout blizzard. We're above the tree line with no markers. We end up coming down the wrong side, hiking for hours in sometimes chest-deep snow. 
We finally hit a road and walk another few hours and find a motel. We beg for a room and after some k-holing, we get one. The next morning, we hitchhike 20 miles back to the base parking lot, climb up and for hours to get our skis and camping gear. There's a raging windstorm at the lean-tos and we have to ski, slide, slip down the icy trail to the parking lot. A few years later, my girlfriend, now wife, are cross-country skiing in Vermont. In the spring, it's a one-way trip from the car. We left back to my brother's car. We have a map and compass and we're following the long trail markers on the trees. It has recently snowed, so it's only our tracks. The prior summer, the trail had been moved, not on our map, but they leave up some of the old tree markers. We become lost and decided to settle in for the night. I dug a deep pit to build a fire. At about 10, the pit collapsed and put the fire out. It's pitch black and we dug out some snow caves, but my inner brain was rebelling. Just then, the moon rose and I could strap on the skis and collect more firewood. We were rescued by volunteer snowmobilers. My brother had called the police at about 3 a.m. It took three hours to get us back to our car. Lastly, we were hiking in the Angeles National Forest and I had a baby in a backpack. We saw a mountain lion. My wife yelled, run, but I calmed her quickly and we slowly backed away. When we were a safe distance away, she took the baby like a football and sprinted down the trail. I saw her meet a small group coming up. When I got to her, I asked if she had warned them and she said coldly, no, I wanted to have someone between us and the lion. Her maternal instinct seemed to have overrode common courtesy. Thankfully, there was nothing on the news that evening. I don't tell this story often. I was young, 5 to 6, walking with my brother 14 to 15 in a forest area. I see a backpack and as I get closer to it, notice a young girl sleeping beside it. I point her out to my older brother, then I notice she didn't quite look right and her dress wasn't covering her. Mostly I remember my brother's grip on my arm pulling me away and the tears in his eyes as we quickly walk out of there and back home. My brother asked me to grab something from his room as he had a hushed conversation with my mom. They phoned somebody, the police came and my brother left with them. We never went walking in that area again. I blocked it out as a kid, but something triggered the memory a few years ago, and I brought it up with my brother one time, thinking it was a dream or I was misremembering. He went white and said he didn't realize I remembered, and that he couldn't talk about it. I was out walking around in the forest surrounding my town at night in the middle of winter alone. I was just listening to music and dancing around, but I felt a little uneasy suddenly. I decided to stop for a bit and take out my earbuds and right as I did, the weirdest noise came from some trees nearby. Something or someone was hitting them repeatedly with a stick. It became more and more aggressive and it sounded like it came closer. I bolted and luckily the hitting stopped. Heard some footsteps but saw no one. I would have probably avoided that part of the forest for the rest of my life if I believed in ghosts because it's right by a viking graveyard, hopefully just a weird animal or human, but I still don't know what the F it was, and it never happened again, still do my night walks in the same area. I was camping with about 10 friends at a spot we'd been to many times. It's up the side of a mountain, not far from the place where the dirt road splits, where there's room for five or so cars popular spot for hikers to park to climb one of the two 14,000 footers mountains on either side of you, Rocky Mountains in Colorado. You need four wheel drive to make it that far, but we continue up one of the trails or roads where you really need four wheel drive to get to our spot a mile or so further into the woods. Anyway, we set up camp, make a fire, cook dinner, drink, and some of us took some acid. Hmm. Well, late into the night or early morning, 2 or 3 a.m., Two friends and I decide to hike farther up the road, which is pretty much impossible to take a car farther up from where we camp. So we hike about half a mile up and come upon an old abandoned mining cabin, probably a hundred years old. We decide to go and look at what's left. No doors or windows, totally trashed. Floors rotted out, but there's a mattress covered in what looked like dried blood, as well as torn up clothes, etc. So we got the F out of there. The next morning, we're telling our other friends what we'd seen. 
they were skeptical, like, you guys were tripping, I'm not so sure. So we all hiked back to the cabin. It was even worse. In the daylight, we saw all sorts of weird symbols and occult-looking shit. Pretty much all the stuff in the cabin was clearly from not more than a few years ago. Creepy shit. I've posted this before, and people ask, did you report it? Why didn't you call police? So, first of all, there's no way we had service. Secondly, this was in an area frequented by hunters and not far from a trail to hike one of the most popular 14ers in Colorado. So, the forest rangers were most definitely aware of the spot. Still creepy as F. Probably hadn't been cleaned up or torn down because it's really difficult to get any vehicles that far. About seven years ago, I was hiking in northern Utah by myself. About 30 minutes into my hike, I almost hear but mostly feel this deep thrumming sound. It pulses and increases in speed until the sounds are happening one on top of each other and then suddenly it stops. The second, which was almost inaudible, filled me with dread. I head back home and try to convince my SO of what I heard. We head back and he hears it too. We do a ton of googling trying to figure out what it was but have no idea. A couple of years later, we're backpacking in central Utah and in the evening begin to hear the same thing. We decide not to camp in that spot and keep moving. Around dawn the next morning I hear it again. We're absolutely freaked out but there's no apparent danger so we leave it at slightly quicker pace than usual. Years go by and we have no idea what that sound is. I posted this story on the Salt Lake subreddit and some kind of stranger informs us that it is a bird call, a grouse I think. Oh, also, one time we got lost in Grand Staircase Escalante. We found our car about 8 hours later than we planned and thought we were going to be stuck for another night without food on a bluff. I also fell in quicksand up to my hip. When I was 17, my family and I decided to go on the hike-bike trail by our house. This trail extended for hours, but we typically stopped at the bridge and turned around. Not this time. We wanted to see how far we could go before sunset. Beyond the bridge, there's a turn in the path around this part of the mountain, so once you pass the bridge and turn the corner, no one can see you, and the bike path becomes undone by human creation and overtaken by nature. Dirt and pebbles in places of smooth concrete and the openings on the trail are now covered by trees on either side. I was longboarding and far ahead of my family who were all on foot. I couldn't see them, but I continue riding until I get this overwhelming pit in my stomach. It felt like the birds and the wind became silent and all I could hear was my heart. I try to play it off as me being anxious on a trail alone. I kept skating for less than 10 seconds when I noticed about 20 yards ahead of me a woman crouched down, hiding, watching me standing off in the trees on the right side of the trail where the woods start to surround the path. At first I think I'm seeing things, but I notice the closer I get to her, the further into the woods she goes. She's watching me from between the brush, but backing up deeper into the woods the closer I get. I get to the point in the brush where I saw this lady, and I investigated to prove myself wrong and convince myself it was my imagination. I get off the path and check out the area of the brush where she disappeared too. I push past the first few branches of leaves and I see a man-made path that leads down the mountains deep into the woods. On the ground of that hidden path I see old clothing covered in dirt and immediately turned around. Y'all ever seen the hills have eyes? Hell no. I don't know where she went so fast or how she suddenly disappeared into the woods, but I took my longboard and I skated the F away and refused to go back. TLDR. Woman was hiding in the woods, watching me on the bike trail. But as I got closer, she went further into the woods. I checked out the place she disappeared to. It was a man-made path leading deep into the woods that had clothing in the dirt path. Not me, but a story I heard on someone else on Reddit. They were in some very, very remote part of California and were about to enter a forest near the edge close to a rock and behind some trees were two people wearing all white, a man and a woman. They simply stared. When he tried to say hi and greet them, they didn't respond but instead just kept on staring. This was in the morning. At night, he noticed his food was missing and there were two human footprints that went all around his tent. Three days later, 
he hears whispering around his tent in the middle of the night. Another day later, as he keeps looking back because of the previous incident, he sees two white dots following him about three miles behind him. They followed him for around 100 miles. That night, he purposefully hid his tent far off the trail. They still found him and lit a candle and light directly at the tent. Dude took off running and they proceeded to chase him. Eventually, he hid and could see them with their light just looking for him. Left all his gear and eventually got to town where he contracted the police. The police said similar incidents had occurred from different people, yet they never found anyone. People were mysteriously disappearing in the forest. Dude made it out and went back home. I saw the full YouTube video about it from Mr. Bolin. Gave me the chills. I enjoy the outdoors like hunting, fishing, hiking, or even taking walks outside. Late night walking alone, I saw a silhouette of what seems to be a person. Mind you, we own this land. I shined my flashlight at him and said, Dude, what the hell are you doing out here? He said, I just lost my apartment and am hungry. Can you please take me to your house so I can eat? I refused and he tried to guilt trip me. I snapped and said, Look, I own this land and if you don't get the F off my property right now, I have a handgun and I'm not afraid to use it. I was wearing black jeans and on my belt as a handgun, concealed. He then ran off into the night. I yelled after him, stay off my land from now on. I never saw him again. This was in 2015, rural Alabama. Closest neighbor was a 10 minute drive. Nearest town was a 45 minute drive. So this was in the middle of nowhere. Once in Lake City, a suburb of Atlanta, I was hiking in Reynolds Nature Preserve. It's surrounded by a neighborhood. We walked up on an ATM on its side in the woods. In my memory, it had a chain around it. It had been stolen from somewhere and dumped earlier. There was a police car off the side of the trail and three cops were standing around the ATM taking pictures. My partner and I came from around the corner in the trail and we had no idea it was there. We stopped in our tracks and the police stopped talking and we just stared at each other. I instantly felt guilty, like the cops might think we had something to do with it, lol. After a couple of seconds of silence, we all kind of laughed and we were like, whoa, what happened? They said something to the effect that it had been stolen the night before. This part of the park was actually pretty close to a street in the neighborhood and someone dumped it out. It seemed so surreal. Going to see if I can end up in one of those YouTube videos where they just quote these. Bingo. So, me and a friend were out late one night, probably 10 p.m. or so, and we were chasing the sound of coyotes in the back end of my property. We had a suppressed 22, and we were going to see if we could catch one with and that hopefully drive the pack away from my chickens. Well, we found a nesting spot for a group of deer when we were making our way to the back of the property. If you haven't seen this, it's basically just a flat spot and a patch of grass or sometimes in the woods and in the case of a tall patch of grass. Well, anyway, we're coming up past this spot that we saw nesting area and we see this beautiful buck. It's not hunting season and we're not equipped to deal with it even if it was an addition to the fact that it's nighttime. So. We just take the opportunity to enjoy looking at this beautiful six to eight point buck when he turns and looks at us. Now we're probably 75 yards away from him looking over tall grass coming through what is probably his nesting spot or the nesting spot for some of his doe. Now it's not like he's going to be protective over the spot or anything. We actually expected him to take off and run as soon as he noticed us, but he didn't. Instead. This five and a half foot tall, probably 200 pound specimen of a buck started stamping his feet back and back feet angrily. He's making this crazy wheezing noise like a person breathing through a plastic tube. It's pretty unsettling. I've never seen an animal act this way, let alone a deer. Compound that with the fact that me and my friend are out here in the dark. So we just sit there and watch. I've got the gun ready, but I have no expectation of needing it. I figured this buck was just acting funny. It's really early in the rut. He's probably just got his jones going a little bit too hard too soon. Not a big deal. Until the damn thing starts spinning. Just hold on full speed spinning in a circle. 
and then I swear to God, there's no making this up. The damn thing starts laughing, not wheezing, not coughing, laughing like a man. Laughs, ha ha ha, full on laughing. A clear chuckling laugh, like a person standing behind the deer and laughing, but it's coming from the deer. Then this thing stands up on two feet and bounces through the grass towards the wood lines and we never see it again, clearing the four foot fence in the process. Yeah, we go up on the coyotes, went back, killed the 24 case and went to sleep. I was hiking some trail in Arizona a few years back. After backpacking for a couple of days, I began heading back to the trailhead. I was coming up to a bend in the trail on the side of a small mountain when I just heard growling and I stopped dead in my tracks. The growling came from somewhere in front of me, so I slowly backed away while keeping my eyes glued to where I thought it came from. I ended up using a map to find a trail that connected to the one I was on and made my way back to the trailhead took me many more hours of walking. To this day, I don't know what was growling, and yes, I didn't actually see it, but to me, that made it even more scary. There aren't a whole lot of things it could have been, but I had no clue and didn't want to risk possibly getting closer.